YouTube. Uh, making this video today just to give y'all a little bit of insight into the technology that we use on the farm nowadays. There's this uh, rumor going around, uh, mainly propagated by a leading 2019 Democratic uh, presidential candidate, won't mention any names, Mike Bloomberg, that you don't need very much gray matter in between your ears in order to be a, a successful farmer. That pretty much all you need to do is dig a hole, put a corn seed in the ground, add a little water, and you got a corn crop. I can assure you there's, there's not anything farther from the truth. Uh, farming has gotten incredibly, you know, farming has gotten incredibly technical. And uh, in the last 20 years, there's been just tremendous uh, technological advances made in agriculture, uh, beginning, with, beginning with GPS and all the computers that we use to, to operate our machinery. So, also in agriculture and mainstream America today, uh, the new catchword is, is sustainability. And to us, sustainability is not a catchphrase. It's an actual practice that we care a great deal about. Our agriculture inputs have become tremendously expensive and we don't want to use any more of them than we have to. Uh, not to mention the, the bottom line, uh, you know, we don't want to apply any inputs that are not going to benefit us. We over apply our inputs, uh, run the risk of some of this stuff getting into the environment, and namely fertilizer. You know, we don't want uh, excess fertilizer leaching from our ground and getting into the groundwater supplies or the rivers or the oceans. You know, we want to impact the environment as, as, li as little as possible. And, and luckily technology has afforded us a way to only apply the amount of nutrients where we need it. So today I'm going to show you how we write prescriptions on our on our desktop computer uh, to only apply the amount of fertilizer and lime that we need for a given area to raise our crop. You know, we also have the ability to variable rate plant our seeds because not all areas of the field yield the same. We, there's uh, there's some high yielding areas and there and there's some low, low and there's some low yielding areas. So you don't you don't need to apply the same amount of seed for those areas to make the yield you want. So I'm going to show you today exa exactly how we how we do that on the computer. All right, to begin with, I'm going to show you how we write variable rate prescriptions for our seed. Uh, right here on the screen, you'll see uh, you'll see you'll, you'll see a yield map for a farm. Uh, the green areas is high yielding, and the red areas is low yielding. As you can tell, there's a lot of variability on this farm. So what we do to create a variable, variable rate seeding prescription is we'll uh, open up our multi-year yield analysis tool, which I've already loaded it for you because this can take a while to run. And we'll, uh, we've got all of our yield maps from past years. Now we've deselected some of them because some of them have data that's really not gonna give, give us what we need. Also, we've, de we've deselected the wheat years because I'm writing a, a seeding prescription for corn. Wheat's a winter crop while corn is a summer crop. They grow in two different, uh, two completely different conditions, so there's no need to use wheat yield data to write a corn prescription. Anyway, we'll just uh, click through and uh, look at our different uh, yield maps from the past years. And then we'll get done with that, we'll click analyze, which I've already done and it'll give you a uh, yield map looks like this and it uh, it takes all those uh, uh, it takes all those yield maps and analyzes them and it gives you the high yielding areas the average areas and then the low and then the low yielding areas so here's low yielding greens high yielding what not and we'll write different prescriptions or we'll put different seeding rates in each in each of these zones if we look at this this, give, this gives us a whole lot more detail. Basically, uh, any, of the, any of the slightly yellowish greenish, yellowish orangish areas are about, are, the, are, are about what the average parts of the field are. So we want these rates to be our field average. And then when we get into the greener areas, see we're getting up into 110, 120, 130, 140% areas. These are much higher yield, yield, yielding areas, and we want to put a higher corn rate. 
uh, also these uh, orange and red areas are lower yielding areas. Now these areas don't have the capability of supporting as many plants per acre, so we're going to reduce our seeding rate on, on these areas. So after I've, uh, after I've analyzed it and I feel like the map looks like the way I want it, I'll save it, which I've already done. And then uh, after, after, we save, uh, after we save that map, where is it at? After we save the map, then we will run, run a calculator on, on one of these layers. Now we have terribly slow internet out here. Some things just take forever to load. Anyway, it gives us our MYY average, and we'll use this layer. And what we'll do, we'll run a calculator on that, and uh, if the zone is like 80% of average, we'll put like 22,000 on it, and say if it's 120, uh, and, say, and if it's 120%, we'll put like 27,000 on it, and, and, ev and everything in between. Let me go up here to where I saved it. this pull ever pulls up it's going to be our actual seeding prescription that we will use and we click down here on the legend see on this particular farm and I can't get the colors right but the green areas are the lowest or the are the low populations and the red areas are the high populations I've tried to adjust the scheme on it but it doesn't want to work for, for whatever reason but anyway, uh, in the lowest yielding areas, you know, we're putting like 17,000 seeds per acre out. And then on the very highest yielding uh, spots, we're putting 29,000 seeds per acre. And, uh, and we got, and we got, and we got, and we got, and we got several different ranges in between. So this, uh, this seeding prescription, if we get, if we get decent weather, should let me make maximum yield on this farm and minimize the seed cost. Because before we had this technology, you know, we might apply an average rate of about twenty-five thousand uh, on on this farm, which would be too high in the low yielding spots and too low in the high yielding spots. Our high yielding spots wouldn't make as much because we didn't have enough plants out there, whereas the low yielding spots would make less because we had too many plants out there. So, another thing that we uh, we use this for is to. Uh, is to variable rate our is, is to variable rate our, uh, our 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 fertilizer recommendations. Right here is a pH map of our farm. Each one of these points is where we pull a soil sample. It's what we call grid sampling. We pull one sample every two and a half acres. And right here is what what you're seeing is the is the pH. The ideal pH on a farm is between 6.2 and 6.6. .6, so. As you can see, we've got quite a few points in here where the pH is good. We don't need to add any lime. If we were to add lime, it would raise the pH too high, and, 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 that, and that wouldn't be good for crops. And as you can tell right here, we've got several areas, several points that have a low pH. And it's also bad because the lower the pH, uh, nutrients are less available. So we need to add lime. To, uh, th to this spot and right through here, right through here, we need to add lime to here to raise the pH up to optimal levels. So uh, what we'll do is we'll run a calculator on this, we, we, and we, we've already done that to write, uh, to write a prescription for, uh, to write a prescription for lime. Come on, internet. And here is our lime prescription. As you can tell, the, the black spots are, we're not putting any lime whatsoever on. Whereas the purple spots, we're putting on quite a bit of lime because we have a pretty low pH. We're putting on about, about three tons per acre in the purple spots. And then our average for the, our, our average for the farm is going to be almost, almost, a, almost a ton and a half. If we were to put a flat rate blanket application on there, it wouldn't do what we need to do for the pH. It'd bring the low spots up a little bit. It'd bring the high spots up too much. And maybe a few spots in the middle, it might, it might, hit, it might hit just right. 
but this allows us to even out the field and only apply what we need where we need it. Now looking at fertilizer, uh, potash is one of our most limiting uh, nutrients. And we don't actually look at the levels of potash in the soil, which is what we've got selected right here. As you can tell, uh, we, we, it's, it's pretty variable. Uh, all of these values are parts per million. So, you know, we're ranging anywhere from 76 parts per million up to 229 nine parts per million up here. But what we actually uh, fertilize by for potash is our base saturation. What we're doing is we're, we shoot for about a 5% base saturation. 5% uh, base saturation is about optimal on our soils for, 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 for potassium and to, and to meet, meet a, a crop's needs. So anyway, we're, we're ranging anywhere from 4.8 uh, base, base saturation to 1.5% base saturation right beside it. And it wouldn't do us any good to, uh, it wouldn't do us any good to apply the same amount across this farm because we would be shorting our crop in some areas and in some areas we would be giving our crop too much. So again, we'll run a calculator over this. We've already done it. And it will give us our uh, potash recommendation. Now, in addition to the potash, we use, uh, we, we, in addition to the potash, we use chicken manure as our, as our base, as, 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 as our base fertilizer. And it has, uh, it has, uh, it has all different types of nutrients in there and potash is being one of them. So what we'll do is we'll subtract the value of the potash of the chicken litter, uh, out, out of our equation. And then, and we'll apply the, the balanced variable rate with, uh, with, with dry, with dry fertilizer. Again, the black areas don't need any potash. Whereas the green areas, the green areas need, 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 need heavy applications of potash. It looks like about, about 500 pounds. So again, this is where we're only applying the nutrients we need where we need them. And we minimize the risk of losing nutrients to the environment. Now going back to our Going back to our seeding prescription, uh, this is a prescription I haven't yet wrote yet because I'll wait and upload the planting data when I'm done planting. One of the biggest polluting nutrients is nitrogen. And, and this field is going to corn and, and corn needs a lot of nitrogen. But uh, nitrogen is easily lost, nitrogen is, is easily lost to the environment. So once we get our planting data uploaded into here, we'll go back and we'll write a prescription to variable rate our nitrogen. Uh, obviously the lower yielding areas right here won't need as much nitrogen, so we won't apply as much. Whereas our higher yielding areas will need more nitrogen because they have more plants. So we'll apply higher rates there. But uh, by variable rating this, it should give us uh, it should give us adequate fertilizer to make a good crop, but minimize the risk of losing it. As you can see, farming is a whole lot more technical than just digging a hole in the ground, putting in the seed, and making a good crop. When it's time to go to the field, we will take these prescriptions and load them onto the monitors on our tractors. The controllers will then control the planter, the fertilizer buggy, or the sprayer to apply only the correct amount of product we're applying in the correct areas of the field. This will benefit both the environment, our crop, and our bottom line. Thanks for watching, and I would like to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and check out our other farming videos. Be looking for more how-to videos in the future.